Welcome to In Search of Ancient Job Search, the documentary that asks the critical question, could ancient man find employment without the help of ancient aliens? Twas in the long ago time, the ancient epic begins, and that epic will be the topic of our program today, an epic that comes from a time lost in the mists of history, forgotten and unsuspected by mortals who now carelessly walk the streets of modern cities to answer want ads and fill out applications. These ancient times were marked by unspeakable dangers and unimaginable foes, and the men and women in need of employment who faced these perils possessed courage and endurance. The annals of their adventures, mostly inaccessible to modern peoples, would inspire current job seekers, for as these noble ones overcame obstacles and threats to get to job interviews on time, they gave rise to heroic songs heard around campfires throughout the earth. Fortunately, one of these songs, an epic of Moella's job search, has been discovered by archaeologists excavating an ancient McDonald's restaurant dating from before the last ice age. That's literally over 2.8 million years before the earliest verified artifacts of human civilization, which were discovered at Gobeki Tepe and date from 11,500 years BCE. This job search song of Mawala, so much older than the ruins of Gobeki Tepe, will rewrite the history of human job search. Moreover, the quarter pounder excavated with the stone engraved song of Mawala was still edible. The lead archaeologist had it for lunch. But enough of that. Introductions can be so tedious. Let us proceed to the actual PowerPoint presentation of this ancient song. The actual animated lithographs will augment our translation of this epic, adding dramatic power to the story. So without further ado, here now is the song of Moella's job search. I, Melwala, son of Hashgir, of the tribe of Krom, which inhabits the land of the melting ice mountains, lost my position as team leader for the McDonald's restaurant, located at the head of three rivers. We were experimenting, serving porcupine meat in our Happy Meals, for this would be a healthy alternative to the more fatty bison meat we had been using. But alas, an unremoved quill punctured the lip of a young warrior. The resulting lawsuit closed the restaurant, forcing me to look for new employment in the plain of Three Rivers, for there were no opportunities in the land of the melting ice mountains. So thus I began my quest. Oh, incidentally, the epic is written to engage the tribe's participation around the campfire. We will honor this ancient tradition. So you, our modern tribe, will join your voices to the tribes of old and accompany Malwella in his quest for a new job, helping him to make the right decisions. You will aid him to overcome monsters, demons, receptionists, and interview questions. Your aim? To ensure that Mawella gets the job he is looking for. Are you ready? This demon of uncertainty confronts Mawella as he prepares to make applications to employers. It comes out of the blackness and confronts Mawella. You don't know how employers judge you, it says, so you have no way to meet their needs. Here, let me ask the question that the employer asks. What is the best predictor of future behavior? The demon laughs as Mawala thinks of the possible answers. A. The applicant's resume. B. The answers given during the job interview. C. The applicant's past behavior. Or D. The completed job application. Melwala thinks hard to remember what the tribal elders told him. He then answers. Guided by the elders' wisdom, Melwala picks C. And the result? Victory is yours, Melwala. The answer to the question is C, for the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. 
Confronted by the light of truth, the demon explodes into pieces before Melwala. His way now is clear to proceed. One of Melwala's employer choices is Willie Mammoths are us. He has experience skinning mammoths and would like to get a job in the skinning department. When he calls, he gets the receptionist, known throughout the plain of Three Rivers as the Great Wall of Despair. She says, Willie Mammoths are us, how may I help you? Melwella replies. A. Connect me to human resources, please. B. Please let me talk to the supervisor in the skinning department. C. Hello, my name is Melwalla. I have a packet to send to the supervisor in charge of skinning. Could you verify my information? D. Hello, could you tell me if they are hiring in the skinning department? And Mawella's answer is C. Hello, my name is Melwella. I have a packet to send to the supervisor in charge of skinning. Could you verify my information? And the result? Victory is yours, Melwella. The answer is C. You follow the rest of the script that the elders taught you. As a result, the receptionist gives you the name, number, extension, and fax of the person you really want to read your resume, the supervisor of the skinning department, who is the real hiring authority. And so it was that Melwala obtained the vital information he needed to make direct employer contact, specifically the name and contact information of the hiring authority. Phone scripts can be quite useful, just like the one you have in brochure 13 from the workshop. But I digress. Melwala has learned the difficulty of his quest. Finding a job is often the hardest work a person can do. This Melwala was discovering. So he saw the importance of getting assistance and good advice. Today, these can be found in a good workshop. But in Melwala's time, all they had were wizards and he needed one because these challenges were difficult. Without a good workshop, for these were yet to be invented, Melwala realized that he would need magical advice to complete his quest for a job successfully. Though Melwala had gotten through to the supervisor of the skinning department, and was that much closer to his goal of working for Woolly Mammoths R Us, he still needed wisdom to prepare his next step. And so it was that Mawella journeyed on to find the great wizard of the plain and to beg his help. But would the wizard provide the needed assistance? The wizard said to him, I will help you, Melwala, only if you can answer this one question. Shaking with fear, Melwala nodded acceptance of the wizard's terms. Very well, then, replied the wizard. Speak, if you have wisdom, Melwala, and answer my challenge. What is the truth, O Melwala, and what are the four things that it does to make us know that it is the truth? Answer well, and I will help you. Answer poorly, and you will, well, you get my drift. Melwala thought carefully about the alternatives. The first alternative. The truth is relative. It's relative to the event, the record of the event, opinions about the event, or the feelings that the event produced. Second possibility. The truth is socially determined, determined by the public poll, or by statistics, or by the news report, or by informed public opinion. Third alternative. The truth is what works. It describes, explains, predicts, and allows one to influence. And the fourth alternative, the truth is simply a matter of power. And Melwala picks C. The truth is what works. It describes, explains, predicts, and allows one to influence. And the result? 
As a sage have you answered well, Melwalla. The truth is what works. It describes, explains, predicts, and allows us to influence. I will tell you now what you need to know, O oh wise warrior. To get your interview at Woolly Mammoths are us, you must first defeat the glowing dragon of Sarth. He will seek to devour you. But this green orb hurled at the monster at the right moment contains magic that will defeat him. Here, take it. But know ye that before you hurl the orb, you must answer the dragon's question aright, or the orb will not save you. The wizard's advice was dreadful, as it was wise, for Soth is a great swamp, with trees and bogs and stagnant waters, even in the light of day, the place is enough to turn the bravest warrior pale, and if you know anything about dragons, it was just the kind of place a dragon would pick to ambush a lost and unwary traveler. Melwalla, innocent in the ways of dragons, could not know the glowing dragon might play this awful place to its advantage. Unaware of this strategic danger, Melwalla painfully slogged his way through the putrid vegetation. The vile surroundings had a most unusual effect upon him. He felt as if all color had left him for fear, that he had been blanched white. And then suddenly he heard the orb speak. Melwalla, the orb whispered, I suggest that you look up. You might find that useful. As he pondered what mystical meaning there might be in the orb's words, Melwalla decided to do the obvious. He looked up, and there he saw the glowing dragon of Sarth springing its ambush upon him. But as he locked eyes with the dragon, the dragon was forced to stop. To devour Melwalla, according to the rules of dragon warfare, he was now obligated to ask a question. If Melwalla answered well, then the dragon had to allow the warrior to hurl his magic orb, which would risk death if the orb hit its mark. If he answered poorly, the orb would provide no protection, and Melwalla would be lunch. Wanting to dine early, the dragon cleared its throat. Breathing fire does that to a person. And then the dragon asked, When you go for your job interview, said the dragon, you should greet the interviewer according to these three letters, G, N, P. What do they mean, O Mawala? And give me an example that proves your understanding, or lunch you will become for this hungry dragon. Be swift to answer, for this is an awful place, even for dragons. Thus I will do you a courtesy. I will take you out to eat. As the dragon eyed Melwalla to determine the size of the pickle he might need for the sandwich, Melwalla thought back to his youth and the cave paintings he grew up with. His grandfather, Kush Bashar of the tribe of Krom, had painted GNP on the wall of his retirement cave. He had taught Melwalla the magic, but Melwalla could not remember what his grandfather had taught him. He could only think of alternative interpretations. And those alternatives filled Melwalla's mind as he watched the dragon above licking its lips. Malwala thought GNP could mean A. Gross national product. Then it could also mean B. Gurgling noxious predator. That would fit the dragon, certainly. Then it could mean C. Greeting, name, position but that sounded too simple. Or it could mean D, go neutralize the problem. That at least sounded businessy. Suddenly Melwalla remembered what GNP meant. It meant greeting, name, position, as in, good morning, my name is Melwalla, and I'm here to interview for the woolly mammoth skinning position you currently have available. The magic ball now activated was hurled at the dragon, and the dragon was defeated. The defeated dragon 
dropped from the sky, completely vanquished, and Melwala's color returned to him. This was a great test that Melwella had endured. Lesser applicants would have fallen to the dragon's cunning and harsh claws, but a greater test awaited Melwalla. Nonetheless, now the glowing dragon of Soth had been defeated. Melwalla still has no set interview with woolly mammoths or us, but he has delivered his resume to the supervisor of the skinning department in which he wishes to work. His defeat of the glowing dragon will help him, for he has skinned the beast and has the dragon's skin and head as proof of his advanced ability. If the supervisor contacts him, he will be able to demonstrate concretely his actual technical skill. In fact, our news department has learned that a messenger is now on his way to deliver an invitation to Mawala to interview for a skinning job but to be successful he will have to overcome the question demons. And here is that messenger now offering the opportunity to Mewala to interview. But nonetheless he warns Mewala that the question demons await and that they are always angry and hungry. Mewala arrives for his interview at Woolly Mammoths or Us expecting to meet with the Woolly Mammoth Skinning Department supervisor. Instead, he discovers that he is scheduled for a team interview, and the team interviewing him is made up of the ever-angry and hungry Question Demons. They are known for questions that can turn warriors into whimpering children and then absorb their souls into oblivion. The first question demon steps forward menacingly and asks, Tell us about yourself, Melwala. Melwala thinks for an instant. He sees three answers to give, but he hesitates. These answers play in his mind. Which shall he choose? Help Melwala select the right answer. Answer A. I am Melwala, son of Haskir, of the tribe of Krom. Our tribe is known for killing and skinning woolly mammoths. My ancestors skinned woolly mammoths, and I wish to join them in this activity upon the plain of Three Rivers. I know that I have the inborn talent for this work. All I need is the opportunity to show what I can do. In no time, I will be a tip-top skinner. Answer B. I move to the plains because there are few opportunities in the region of the Melting Ice Mountains. I had a job with McDonald's, but that restaurant got into some prickly problems and closed down. So I need a new job, one that will use my experience and allow me to acquire new skills. I am a fast learner, good with a club, and willing to start on the bottom in this mammoth industry. Answer C. I have recently moved to the plain of Three Rivers from the great melting ice mountains. I think this is a good place to live and work, but the best way to tell you about myself is to tell you my job skills. I am experienced in skinning large animals. In fact, I have a dragon pelt with me that I recently processed. I can fabricate all tools required for the skinning process and am experienced in maintaining these tools. I have been trusted to troubleshoot difficult skinning projects and meet quotas. I will work any hours. I am strong, productive, a good team worker, and a problem solver. Is there anything else you would like to know? Melwella fought long and hard, and then finally picked the alternative C. And the result? Victory is yours, Melwalla. You have wisely answered, giving only a very brief biographical background, and then outlining relevant skills that would qualify you for the Mammoth's R Us position. The tool maintenance skills and the dragon pelt offered as documentation of experience, both are nice touches. The tell us about yourself question has fallen before you, Melwalla. You are closer now to victory, but you are not there yet. 
The second question demon steps forward, eyes gleaming with menace, and asks, Are you a good team player, Melwalla, and why do you believe that? Melwalla thought of three things he could say. The first thing that came to his mind was this. Ah, why yes, I am a good team player. I'm glad you asked that question. Working as part of a team is something I have done since I was a child, so I have lots of practice. I helped my mother grill bison and mammoth on special occasions. I went on hunting parties to stock our tribe's lotter. I have even officiated during festivals, such as the annual bison bash, and those in my tribe look up to me as a leader. In addition, I worked at the Three Rivers McDonald's, where I began as staff, but soon was promoted to team leader. So I think I have good experience as a team worker. And then Melwalla thought, Yes, I have good teamwork skills. I have worked on teams on the job and in my tribe to solve problems and achieve goals. Here's an example. When I worked as staff at the Three Rivers McDonald's restaurant, on one occasion we had a problem. It was the evening rush, so the restaurant was busy. We had a number of children. Without warning, a velociraptor burst through the front stone arches. This caused quite a panic. We were afraid that some of the children might be eaten. Krob, son of Krieg, was a sandwich maker. I asked him for some and used them to distract the angry creature. I also had some french fries. I fed these to the reptile until it became more calm. Two other co-workers and I were then able to take the animal to a more quiet location away from customers in order to talk. After we explained that velociraptors as a species had become extinct millions of years ago, the velociraptor realized how unacceptable its behavior was. It apologized and promised not to eat any of our customers. We gave it some coupons for quarter pounders and it became a good customer. Never had a problem from it again. And that's why I think I'm a good team player. Teamwork is a good way of solving problems. Let me explain. When a business encounters a problem, it is a problem that affects all employees. That's why a representative group of employees should be called upon to address such problems in the name of the entire organization. This builds trust and respect among group members, allows natural leaders to rise to the top, and empowers management to position the company more competitively. The resulting success in resolving problems is the work of the entire organization. Everyone can celebrate. That builds morale and provides incentive. That's why I am committed to teamwork, both on and off the job. Again, thinking deeply, Melwala chose Alternative B, the story of how he and some co-workers turned a noxious velociraptor into a congenial and faithful customer. Victory is yours, Malwala. You have wisely answered, giving a concrete example of teamwork along with the added qualities of leadership and problem solving. The story also demonstrates effective customer service. Well done. Congratulations, Melwala. The are you a good team player question has fallen before you. You are now closer to victory, but you are not there yet. The last question, demon, with an evil swing of its scythe, ask Melwala, what are your future plans, Melwala? Melwala could think of three things to say, but which one? Alternative A, I would like to get your job. That certainly would show ambition. Or alternative B, I would like to start my own business. Wouldn't that show even more ambition? Or perhaps I should go with alternative C. I would like to use the skills I have and acquire new skills that would prepare me for greater responsibility. But which should he choose? If he chooses right, he will meet his new boss, the supervisor of the skinning department. If he chooses incorrectly, he will still meet the supervisor of that department, but not as an employee, instead 
Melwala will be the product. Melwala finally decided to choose C. I would like to use the skills I have and acquire new skills that would prepare me for greater responsibility. The result of his choice... Welcome to the Woolly Mammoths Are Us skinning department, Melwala, son of Hashgir, of the tribe of Krom. I am your new boss, Flaming Horns, son of Ashgore, of the Volcano tribe. Good to have you aboard. Let me introduce you to our crew. Then I will assign you to our new higher training. Again, good to have you with us. With your background, you will certainly be a nice addition to our department. Thank you for watching the In Search of Ancient Job Search presentation of the history-making song of Moella's Job Search. Until next time, this is your correspondent bidding you good night and good luck.